you know, I don't, I don't think of me as a crystal ball, but uh, what does the future of Bitcoin hold? And do you think it's too late to opt in? And I'm interested in, I know I have my opinion, but what are your drivers for the price over the next few years? Well, I, I definitely don't have a crystal ball, but I, I think at least from a framing perspective, I'll tell you how I think about it. I think about the first chapter of Bitcoin as kind of the genesis block until let's call it now. And that's been all about Bitcoin, the asset, which is really the theme of this conference. And what's driving right now, accelerating institutional adoption is the view of Bitcoin being de-risked, right? And I, th I think that's why you're just going to see a wall of money. I, I, I know it. I have an order book, a wall of money coming into the asset class. So let me put you to sort of frame this out in the mind of an institutional investor, me. Okay. I put you, I'll put you in my mind. My partners and I bought more Bitcoin in 2020 last year, then in 2013 through 2019 combined. Okay. And as our fiat businesses continue to inflate and accelerate, which they are, I expect we'll buy more Bitcoin in the next two years and in the pre than we did in the previous eight. So, so what's going on? I mean, we're conservative, institutional, professional risk managers. It's what we do for a living. And it's why Investors, including the most conservative investors in the world, have entrusted us with $20 billion in our alternative businesses, our non-Bitcoin businesses. And to us, conservative us, Bitcoin is de-risked. Why? Well, when I look at Bitcoin, I see it above $500 million billion of market cap. I see millions of people using it every day with a clear line of sight to tens of millions of people using it every day, and then billions. I see 12 years of uninterrupted, safe operation of the network. And when I look at all that, the left tail of the zero outcome is gone. And that is the key observation. So when I talked to institutional investors a few years ago, I would get the question, you know, what's the chance of Bitcoin going to zero? And a few years ago, that was an interesting conversation. Last week, a client asked me, what's the chances of Bitcoin going to zero? I said, what's the chances of Christianity going to zero? Like, it's just not. Like, it's just, it's just left. It's left the station. And so remember, at Stone Ridge, we are risk managers. We, we do it professionally. And what you're talking about here with Bitcoin is an extraordinarily asymmetric upside asset. Um, we can debate whether it's good or bad, but I think we can't debate the asymmetric upside to it. It's perhaps the most asymmetric potential right tail asset in, in the world in history and you chop off the left tail, we all know what happens, right, to the mean. It just, it just explodes. It explodes. You chop off the left tail, the mean explodes. And you combine that with the macro environment, the money printing presses running at full tilt. I mean, the blue wave in the US, complete political dysfunction around the world. Um, I mean, for us, at least at Stone Ridge, fiat reserves are like a hot potato in our hand. We make them in this business, we can't get them our, our hands fast enough and put them into into Bitcoin, we could convert them as quickly as possible. So yeah, we're risk managers at Stone Ridge, but we're also capital allocators. You can't eat risk management. You can, meet, make, you can eat making money in the markets. And we believe in the power of Bitcoin, but if we didn't think we'd make money, we wouldn't invest a penny. So you're calling chapter one of Bitcoin 2009 through today, Bitcoin the asset. And I guess that really, uh, is the process of going from zero to one. Bitcoin didn't exist, now it does. What's chapter two? Well, I think chapter two is gonna be incredibly exciting. And chapter two builds on...